It is in the country of the two rivers, where the river Tor and her sister, the Torridge, wind lazily through the North Devonshire countryside, that the strange story of Tarka the Otter begins. Here, where Canal Bridge spans the river Torridge, the animals that make up Tarka the Otter's world are to be found. To Canal Bridge every evening comes Old Nod, wisest heron of the two rivers, to spear fish for a living. In the right-hand arch of the bridge that once carried a canal across the river, roosts Eldridge, the white owl. Throughout the day, he stands among the bones and skulls of mice, watching the river. For generations, the dry cave behind the barrier of roots has been used as a sleeping place for otters. Instinct had drawn the otter to her birthplace to make a special couch of oak leaves and reeds. The hollow tree shared by owl and otter was known as Owlery Holt. The otter's attention turned from the owl. She was using all her senses to find enemies. Drifting down the river was the taint most dreaded by otters, the scent of deadlock. <laughs> Deadlock was master of the pack. In his veins ran the blood of wolves. He had an insatiable lust for otters, and he was always to be found ahead of the hunt. Must be a bitch in cub, Master. This is where Hounds marked last month. Yes, I remember. Let her be and move on downstream. Pull Deadlock out, Tommy. Deadlock, Deadlock. Ah, oh, Deadlock, leave it. Come on, leave it, Deadlock. Go on away. The otter's heart slowed. She forgot quickly. Now the bees slept and voles ran through the grass. The bitch otter made no move to leave the holt. She lay on her side in pain and a little scared. While she waited to give birth, the song of the river stole into the holt and soothed her.
Now the otter needed no comfort, for nestling in the curve of her neck was a head smaller than one of her own paws. The cub's name was Taka, which means little water wanderer. All night long, bloody Bill Brock the badger had prowled and hunted. He hastened in his waddling run, being hungry. He was always hungry. He would eat anything. Otter forgot her fright as she pulled Taka into the safety of her body again. She was careful that Taka should be clean, and many times in the nights and days of his blind helplessness, she rolled on her back to lick him. Only one morning, when the rising sun silvered the mist lying over the river, the dog otter with whom Taka's mother had mated nearly nine weeks before followed her scent to the island above the hole. game the otters played, corkscrewing through the water, turning on their backs with sideways sweeps of rudders. It gave them delight and made them hungry.
before the coming of her cub, the otter's world had been a wilderness, but now her world was in the eyes of her firstborn. She was overjoyed when Tarka's lids unsealed and his eyes peeped upon her, blue and wondering. He was then three weeks old. The daylight at the opening of the Holt held no fear for Tarka. When he was six weeks old, he peered out on the outside world for the first time. Each day, Tarka ventured further and further from the Holt and learned something new. He heard, for the first time, the ancient song of the river and yearned to get nearer to it. July were past. Time flowed with the sunlight around Owlery Hold. Tarka was now three months old. He had been taught to fish and was now ever alert to danger. Tarka's father was being hunted and was looking for sanctuary in Owlery Hope. In her overriding desire to protect Tarka, the bitch otter snapped at her mate and drove him off. Tarka heard the cry, which to many otters meant that all their efforts to escape had been in vain. Downstream! The sound slowed and ceased. They broke out again and slowed away into silence. Tarka's father was dead.
beam wear. August and September slid into October. Out of the foamy spate, a silvery flicker shook and vanished. That night, when Taka and his mother had followed the salmon to the tail of the weir pool, an ominous sound disturbed them. Can you see anyone? It's clear like the flare. Yellow from ash and elm and willow, buff from oak, rusty brown from chestnut, scarlet from bramble, the waters bore away the first coloured leaves of the year. The thunderstorm roused eels from the bottoms of ponds and lakes, dikes and ditches and drains where they had hibernated during the summer. They were the females, urged seawards by a common desire to journey to their spawning beds across the Atlantic, far underneath the floating weeds of the Sargasso Sea. The eels were devourers of the eggs of salmon and trout, and the otters were devourers of eels. Although otters rid the rivers of eels, the landowners took no note of this and decreed that otters be treated as vermin.
Tarka was alone, a young male of a ferocious but persecuted tribe. The tribe's only friends, except the spirit that made it, were its enemies, the otter hunters. While the eels were migrating, Taka found his food easily. The more he killed, the more he wanted to kill, and he feasted on them till his jaws were tired. As Taka left Canal Bridge, so his cubhood ended. Now indeed did his name fit his life, for he was a wanderer and homeless. At Biddeford, the noise of traffic frightened him, but hunger overcame his fear. What did you do then, Molly? I said to him, I said, well, if you come round again, I'll give you what for. Oh, Molly, you never. Six hours later, he was at the estuary, where the waters of the two rivers meet. Estuary was a new world to Taka with new sights and sounds. A new world in which every nook and cranny had to be explored to satisfy an otter's singular curiosity. taste of the unfamiliar salt water sharpened Taka's appetite. In the days that followed, Taka learned how to eat crabs cracking them with his teeth to set loose the flesh within. The heron and owl had been Taka's friends in his early life, now, the Brent Goose was ever alert to danger and ready to cry, Alarm! Pull out her! Come on, Shiner! The salmon fisherman hated otters, Shiner in particular, for it was his finger that Taka had bitten two months earlier. You got 
the vote there, Shiner. Now give me that net. There's that otter out there, Shiner. We'll have him. We'll get a few bob for his skin, Billy. You save your breath for hauling, you Shiner. Save your breath for hauling. The arc of net set to catch salmon grew smaller and smaller as it was relentlessly gathered in. Come on, lads. Tarka was trapped. Got him! We got him! Quick! Desperately, Tarka searched for a way out. Afterwards, Tarka travelled to where the long Atlantic rollers, driven by December gales, incessantly pound the north side of the estuary at Saunton Sand. Great Warren in the sand hills came Tarka to hunt for rabbits. Yeah. Tarka heard the voices of men, and from the opening of the burrow saw two rabbit catchers heading down the sand hills to the water. What did you tell anybody to market them? We just said fast that you can kill them, mate, and tell them they did. Oh, well. That's all they do. Got three or four here last week. Go on, till they nuts, Tom. Yes. Be ready to shoot them, Dad. I'll kill them, all right, don't you worry. The ferret's rank smell and its tinkling bell disturbed Tarka. Oh, come on, we come out quicker before. Why are you mucking about? They're not there. Tom! Don't point that thing at me! Tom, you bloody mazed. Don't waste your cartridges on Vic Fing, we mere after rabbits. Tarka did not stop until he reached the sanctuary of Ram's Horn Pond, a mile away. To the annoyance of the swans, he hunted the waters of the pond. A blown grey rain heralded the onset of winter. Instinct moved Tarka to make a warm couch in a clump of rushes beneath a bramble thicket.
During his wanderings in the creeks behind the pond, the scent of another otter attracted him. He heard an otter's whistle, and a feeling of joy warmed his being. White Tip was her name, and she was the same age as Tarka. Tarka's emotions were as intense as they were quick. He was in love with White Tip. Otter also wanted White Tip as his mate. Tarka was so frightened that he ran away back to the safety of Ram's Horn Pond, his ardour dampened. The icicle spirit had arrived. And for two days and nights, the frosty vapor lay over the estuary. No power could exorcise it. Out of the blizzard had dropped a herd of wild swans and a strange thick-set bird, an arctic owl. Mile after mile, its soft and silent wings had carried it from the frozen land of the northern lights. For two days, Tarka did not venture from his warm couch until hunger forced him to set out in search of food.
The ice talons set harder in the land. No twitter of finch or linnet was heard, for those which remained were dead. One night, raving with hunger, Taka was drawn to a nearby farmyard. The smell of ducks was painful to Taka. Juices flowed into his mouth. His heart beat fast. They ducks no more. Right in the farmyard forgotten, and his paw healed, Taka left Ramshorn Pond to embark on his spring journey. Taka left the estuary, passing the well-remembered places of his earlier journey, sleeping by day in riverside holts and marshes, and feeding by night. It was a happy journey that Taka made up the river, swollen with snow water. Instinct urged Taka to the stone at which every otter travelling up the river before him had paused. followed the scent of otters up the torridge to where it became the oakman flowing down from Dartmoor.
the buzzard, looked down on where the two rivers began. Tarka had followed the torridge to its source. Tarka, puzzled, encountered frogs for the first time. Tarka set off again. This time the river Tor was his waterway. On a regular marking place of otters, to his joy, Tarka recognized the scent of white tip. His heart beat faster and he followed the water she had traveled. The river hurried away from the moor to become a proper river with bridges, brooks, islands, weirs and mills. From the sun came the unseen message. The sap rose in the grasses and in the rugged oak tree. Bird and flower, tree and butterfly were moved. So every year in the spring, life came to the earth. Tarka, too, felt the urge to take a mate. Tarka had many friends he played with and forgot during his joyful water life. Sticks, stones and once an empty tin. Like all otters, Tarka reveled in falling water, going wild with joy, rolling in ecstasy as he tried to catch the twisting rope of water. White tip. A few hours earlier, her mate had been killed by hounds. Tarka heard White Tip's call and whistled in his joy. The otters played and played. They frolicked together and there was great joy in their having found each other again.
spring turned into summer, but otters know only day and night, the sun and the moon. The two otters travel down the river Tor to the estuary, where the two rivers meet before flowing into the Atlantic. White Tip was way wise in this water. She was taking Taka back to the Holt, where she had been born. And while White Tip awaited the birth of her cubs, Taka also returned to where he had been born, Owlery Holt. Owlets wheezed and weaved, looking down on Taka just as Eldridge had looked down on Taka's mother before his birth. Warbler's song was heard by White Tip suckling her newly born cubs in the hope. Sometimes Taka came up from Owlery Holt to see White Tip when she would leave the cubs to relax and gamble with Taka among the king cubs.
At times, White Tip wanted to be alone and rejected Tarka's call to play. working very hard. He'd got two youngsters to feed, who he felt were old enough to leave the nest and learn to fish for themselves. Nevertheless, off he went again. Now, at his favourite fishing place, stood another heron, after his fish. preened himself in his satisfaction. When the owlets let him, Tarka slept and dreamt of a journey with White Tip down to a strange sea where otters were never hungry and never hunted. As the dragonflies of the river, so were the otter hunters' uniforms coloured, blazing in blues, reds, and gold. Uh, right, uh, Harry, move in a little. I think we can gather round rather more closely, gentlemen. Uh, you, sir, could you come forward a little bit there, please? Thank right, you, that's it. Thank you. And you, gentlemen at the back, could you move out of the picture, please? For the country of the Thank two you. rivers, the first meet of the otter hunting season was a grand social occasion. Right, yeah. Oh, boy, out of the picture, please. Come along, boy. Get away, boy. Get out of the way, though. Right now, gentlemen. If you could hold very still, please. Right, that's it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, oh, new. Well, uh, thank you very much. I hope you've learned out of it. I'll see you again later on. Very good, Master. Yeah. It's very kind of you to allow us to meet here again this year, Hibbert, and entertain us so agreeably. Not at all, Master. Absolutely delighted to see you. Have there been any reports of otter in the water? Our riverkeeper says he's seen signs of an otter down at uh, Canal Bridge. Do you remember where you drew last year? I remember. That sounds promising. Well, I hope you're lucky. I'm sure we shall. May I say it, you're looking absolutely charming, my dear. It's always a very great pleasure to see you. Thank you. 
Lucy, what about a glass of sherry? Thank you. Master. Oh, thank you. Well, here's to a successful day. Come on, then. Come on. loved the huntsman, who called each of them by name. Come on, Jarvie. Question, question, question. And there, apart and morose, was Deadlock. Deadlock. Come on, Deadlock. Come on. May we move off, Hibbert? By all means, Master. Now then, out of the way, keepsake. Come on, here. How are you this morning, old girl? Come along, Nimrod. Out of my way. All right, Tommy. You can move off now if you're ready. Yes, sir. Come along, boys. Come on, then. Good, 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 good. Hold up, memory, memory, memory. Come on here. Good. As the 
water was shallow, the otter hunters gave Taka four minutes law, a sporting chance to get away. Instead of going straight on as expected, Taka ducked into the leet, leading off the main river. Taka ran across the meadow, making a loop from the leet to Bean Wood. Taka slipped into the water and swam down to the mill end of the leap. time the noises receded. Taka settled more comfortably in his hiding place. He twitched uneasily in his sleep. How long do you think we should pause here before moving on? Was it about 20 minutes, Master? Yes, that seems reasonable. 
farm in this way. Not while I'm trying to milk my rosy. I'm afraid I really can't argue with you about that now, sir. We may lose hounds. <laughs> Tarka was making for the sanctuary of Alary Holt. All he wanted was to be left alone and to sleep.
You people over there? The others? Down there? The otter disappeared. The river grew quiet. The huntsman walked slowly upstream, letting the hounds work themselves. Every yard of the river was searched again. Only Taka's nostrils and eyes were above water. He never moved. swam until he saw before him the bright bubbled iron shod barrier. Upstream the water was thrashed in another line from bank to bank. Taka was trapped and exhausted. And while they stood there silently looking down at Deadlock, a bubble rose out of the depth and broke. And as they watched, another shook the surface and broke. And there was a third bubble in the ocean-going waters and nothing more. <laughs> 